Hey guys, I'm Rodin. Welcome to Balmy Spirit. I hope you guys are doing awesome. Oh, did it just glitch out? It might have glitched out. Anyway, hello, I'm Rodin. Welcome to Balmy Spirit. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, and any of you who already have, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, the algorithm is like not happy that I changed my content so much. And so they've been like unsubscribing a lot of people, changing notifications. And I only know that because people have told me so. Um, and it's like, you know, it's a thing. So just make sure you're checking that even for your favorite YouTube channels. Okay. Um, so this is going to be the intuitive weekly astrology reading. The way this works, if you're new, I go over the astrology of the week and I give you my input. You don't have to take it as truth. And also with astrology, please do not like get so attached to it that like you're not living your life <laughs> or you're like not allowing yourself to try certain things. Um, astrology is great and it's fun and it's informative, but we shouldn't allow it to make ourselves live in a prison. Okay. Um, after that, I channel and I pull cards. So yeah. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm like, is there anything else I need to mention? As you guys know, I do have a, a chronic cough situation. I've had it my whole life. It acts up in certain situations during allergy season, even sometimes when I'm channeling or dealing with certain uh, denser energies. So if that happens, I will do my best to not like blow your ears out for those who are wearing headphones, but just know that I'm fine and I'm not sick. It's just part for the course with my channel. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Uh, this is going to be for May 9th to May 15th. May 10th, we have Jupiter moving into Aries, and also Mercury is going retrograde in Gemini on May 10th, and officially goes direct in early June, if I'm not mistaken. The date eludes me at the moment. Um, and then on May, is it 15th? Um, I always, I'm always never sure if I'm pronouncing this asteroid properly. Ceres, Ceres <laughs> moves into uh, Cancer, Cancer energy which actually I think would be interesting for, for that asteroid because that asteroid's all about cycles <clears throat> and nurturing and self-care, which is totally like cancer energy. Also, you know, cancer is the moon, the feminine, but anyway, I could talk forever. Um, and then this week I'm doing is to the 15th, but just know that on the 16th of May, we do have the full moon lunar, full eclipse. It's a full eclipse, not a partial. Um, Lunar eclipse in Scorpio. It's like, what is that noise? I live in a very noisy neighborhood, so don't mind me. Mom, don't mind that. I'm going to talk a little bit about the full moon Scorpio. Not a lot, just because there are some aspects here um, that will be playing a big role. So that's why I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but I'm only going to talk about those aspects. I will be doing a full moon live when I am back. I'm going out of town tomorrow and I'll be back on the 13th. And so I'll be doing a full moon live once I'm back, probably on the 14th. Um, and it's going to be on my Patreon. And as always, always, I post the full moon, new moon lives to Vimeo for those who don't want to be patrons. But we have a lot of fun over on Patreon. So go ahead and check it out. We also have lives where we just hang out and talk about certain topics or even just hang out with each other and have a good time. Um, so yeah, yeah. So this week, we still have a lot of really positive motivating energies. And I do have my notes here because I will lose track. Um, but we do have some challenges coming up. And those challenges will be a big part of the full moon Scorpio. So do not despair. The new moon Taurus gave us a lot. It gave us so many beautiful gifts. It really gave us gifts. I know for some people, it's been a harsher period than others. There's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of shifts. While Uranus is also in Taurus, this particular period of time as a North Node is also in Taurus, the whole 18 month period, it's all about changes. It's all about changes, it's all about activations. It's all about changing our foundations and how we look at resources and our values, like our physical world and what we can do to implement changes that are healthier, that bring us to a new level of living um, that's a little bit closer to spirit, a little bit closer to source uh, and closer to also unity consciousness, whatever word you want to use for it. It's about making these very drastic changes, right? So we're in the midst of that. So some of us had a lot of things fall out of our life and a lot of things come into our life, right? So, sorry, <laughs> I didn't know my phone. Sorry, I thought my phone was on Do Not Disturb. Hold on, give me a second. I was like, what was that? Put that on Do Not Disturb. Coming back. Changes, changes, changes. Endless changes. 
endless changes. Also activations and awakenings and expansions of the consciousness of consciousness. So that's also um, part of the course. But with the new moon in Taurus, there was so much positive energy between Taurus and Pisces. And I mean, like we were working with all conjunctions and sextiles. Both of those are supportive energies and sextiles in particular about opportunities. So it's been opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for all of us to embrace the new and really, really let go of some old stuff um, that's been affecting us individually and collectively. Now with the full moon Scorpio approaching, it's it's putting it to the test a little bit. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. It's going to feel a little bit like how bad do you really want the new? How tempting is the familiar, is the old, is the seductive, like that sort of that sort of stuff, right? But I have full confidence that all of you can handle these energies just fine. Don't be afraid that it's Scorpio. Scorpio is also a beautiful gift in and of itself. It facilitates rebirth. It facilitates resurrections. It facilitates Phoenix rising moments, right? We all love those because those feel pretty empowering. But going over the aspects really quick for all this positive energy we have, we have the sun in Taurus uh, creating a sextile with Mars and Neptune. Both Mars and Neptune are in Pisces, and we still have a really nice sextile between Jupiter and Pluto. So I want to talk about Jupiter and Pluto really quick because this aspect is, is leaving this week. We still have it this week, but by the time we hit next week, we're not going to be feeling it. Pluto, again, very scorpionic energy. Just because it's in a sextile, I think even, well, let me back up. I think when people hear Pluto, they get scared. <laughs> I think people look at Pluto and they go, that can't be positive at all. No, Pluto is very positive in the right context. And with Jupiter sextile Pluto, it's amplifying a very positive, empowering energy, and it's bringing in opportunities for growth, okay? It's bringing in opportunities for growth, for success. We're talking growth and money. So in wealth opportunities, work opportunities, financial opportunities, but also spiritual development, right? Because Pluto is also about our subconscious. It's also about our own little under personal little underworld, our own little inner Scorpios, no matter what's going on in your chart. We all got Scorpio somewhere. Um, even if it's just like your house of whatever, <laughs> right? Even if you have no planets in Scorpio, you still got a house that, that has Scorpio energy attached to it, right? Um, anyway, I think, I just think I'm, I'm biased because I'm Scorpio stellium, but I do think Scorpios get a bad rap sometimes. I'm sorry. Anyway, coming back. So utilize that Jupiter sextile Pluto energy, like really get into it, really allow yourself to try new opportunities. And if you, if you haven't been doing that, like that's totally fine. This is probably like a good last week to do so before like the peak of that uh, full moon Scorpio really hits us. Um, so yeah, utilize that, please. Now the sun sextile Neptune is bringing in heightened sensitivity. Okay. Heightened sensitivity of all the senses. And of course, because New Neptune's home in Pisces, it's going to really amplify the whole psychic awareness, intuition and dreams and empathy and all that stuff. But because it's all, the sun's also in Taurus, who rules the senses, even touch, taste, sound, sight, like all of that is going to be heightened. I feel I was as I was writing my notes, like it's the way that I work, the way spirit works with me through me. When I'm going over astrology notes, um, they'll actually give me channelings about the astrology at play. And so I'll like, I'll try to remember, I'll write them down. Um, they were telling me there's going to be some, some, uh, third eye openings, awakenings happening because of that aspect or around that aspect. It's all just supportive energy. Nothing's coincidental. Um, so just know that your, your senses will be heightened, but that's a good thing. It's going to allow you to have more discernment. It's going to have, you're going to have an easier way, a easier time discerning certain people and situations. And there should be more empathy and more compassion between people. Now, of course, you're not going to see that in everybody because everybody's on their own journey and has their own mindset and their own stuff. But it really leans towards having more opportunities for that. Now, the sun sextile Mars this is something that's been with us for a while, too. This is also the last week we're probably going to have this energy. That's a really awesome, motivating energy to really get up get out and, and start to really create and build and be very proactive. So all of those working together are very, very positive. And we have that this entire week. But like I said, um, actually, are all of them? Yeah, all of them. All of them by next week are going to start to really pitter out or just not even be affecting us anymore. Now, I will say Vesta, which is an asteroid. Um, Vesta is also conjunct Saturn. And that's also getting weaker this week, but that's also helping us. It's helping us to be more disciplined with our own sacred missions and also working more closely with our own divine creative 
uh, feminine power. We all have feminine energy, right? And we need that feminine energy. We need the womb space uh, to literally create and bring life to things, right? Mars energy, masculine energy helps us to facilitate using that. Like Mars energy helps us to create the structure put in place the foundation while we use the feminine energy to actually bring life to that particular structure and foundation, right? So anyway, so really positive stuff. Now here, let's talk about the challenges. Let's talk about some of the challenges here. So even with the full moon Scorpio, this week and full moon Scorpio energy, keep in mind, eclipse energies affect us longer, okay? They're a lot, they're a lot more impactful. Um, the post shadow, I believe, is actually like a six month period, and everyone has their own theory as to how long it really is. Um, but that just know that that's a, a a narrative out there in the sphere of things. But air energy, air energy is really posing the challenge here. So Mercury is retrograding on the tenth in Gemini, and it goes direct in June. Now I haven't looked at the aspects for the new moon Gemini, but I feel like new moon Gemini is going to tie into what the what Mercury retrograde highlights for us, okay? Now, while Mercury is in Gemini and retrograding, it's also creating squares, particularly with um, asteroids, but still squares. And then Saturn in of itself is also an Aquarius, another air energy, and also only creating squares, except for the conjunction with Vesta. The most important square it's creating is with the sun. And that's going to be exact on the 15th, and it will play probably the biggest role in the full moon Scorpio. Okay. Um, eclipse. Um, so just know that. So when we're talking about, put the notes away for a second. So we're talking about challenges with air energy. Um, that's all about the mind. That's about perception, communication, belief systems, right? It is also with that Gemini energy, as I was writing, it's like I was getting um, like ascension alignment, um, merging with the self, connecting with the self, like these like very like spiritual, like term, like, you know, verbiage, I'll say verbiage. Um, so that could also be a part of it for some of us. It's going to affect everybody differently, but just know that the mind, the way the mind is changing, adapting, how we're reflecting on our own perceptions, belief systems, and how that affects how we move about in the world, how we see ourselves, what we actually allow ourselves to do is under examination. It's going to be under review and it might be creating some challenges. Okay. Um, but it's all for our own growth. It's all for our own growth. Okay. Um, so let's get into that square I was talking about with the sun. Like I said, this plays a huge role with the full moon Scorpio. And this is where we're going to feel a little tested, right? Taurus, the Newman Taurus, the last month, the last probably couple months, realistically, has given us a lot of really amazing, beautiful energy to chew on, to embrace, to go after what it is we want, to be done with certain old ways of doing things. Like it's a really nice, like entering into a new phase for the collective. With the Sun square Saturn, it's going to put that energy to the test of, in a way of saying, like, how hard are you willing to work for this? Are you willing to stay committed? Are you really disciplined with this? Is this new reality? Is this new you? This, these new belief systems, these new projects, these new people, do you really want this? Or Scorpio, South Node, Underworld, Underbelly, the taboo side of things, our, our deeper, darker indulgences, impulses. Do you want to go back to the familiar? Do you want to go back to the old? It's like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Right? So we're going to have a harder time following through and being committed to the things that we've been even excited about. Please follow through. Please stay disciplined. There will be consequences for not doing so. And I'm not saying that to sound all like, yeah. Um, when I say there will be consequences... Like you could just be upset at yourself. <laughs> you could just be like, damn it, why didn't I why didn't I just stay the course? Why didn't I just do this? Why didn't I just do that? Um, you could even have other people become upset at you because it is like aqua Taurus. Like both of them are very authoritative in different ways. Um, and you might even go into that shadowy aqua energy of like wanting to rebel and being like, no, I still want to do it this way or that way, or I deserve this, or I deserve to go and do this. Or I'm just going to take time off or whatever. Um, but just stay the course, be on top of your stuff. And the sooner you get these things done, even if it's really hard, um, you got to like pull a couple like late nights, whatever it is, please do it. You'll be happy you did. Um, you might not even feel like other people like recognize how hard your efforts are going to be with this certain aspect at play, but it's not about that. It's not about that. It's about holding yourself accountable, which, again, I've talked extensively about with all this Taurus energy and the Taurus North, North Node in particular. That's one of the biggest takeaways 
for this 18 month period for the collective is understanding that we all have to be accountable for ourselves. We can't be accountable for other people and other people better not hold us accountable for them, right? Accountability, it's important. The other thing that might be a little hard, oh, I forgot. So yeah, as I was like sitting with this, I was sitting with the sun square Saturn, um, I started getting this like uh, insecure, doubtful kind of energy. And I was just starting to channel it. And I was like, yeah, keep following through. You can do it. You're capable. You deserve it. You deserve the things that you're trying to create and bring to life. And then I got the words, not an imposter. So we might have some imposter syndrome stuff coming up for the collective. And I do think that's um, going to correlate with Chiron and Aries conjunct Venus and Aries, which is also going to be exact on the same day that the sun square Saturn will be exact, which will be the 15th. And like I said, both of these will play a huge role in the full moon Scorpio. Chiron and Aries conjunct Venus and Aries. That's going to call into question our identities, our the self, the ego. You could even have some ego death stuff here, or you could actually, the ego could be almost acting up, acting out, getting triggered easier. But if you've been like trying to implement like a new you, a new job, project, whatever it is, especially relationships, because we're also talking about Venus, um, stay true to what your new thing is, what your new reality is. Stay disciplined with it. Stay focused on it. Stay committed to it. Don't get tempted by the familiar. Don't get tem tem tempted by the old, right? That's what this woman Scorpio is going to challenge us with. Um, what else here? Oh, yeah, the feminine. The feminine. <laughs> our ability to create. Our ability to have our own little internal fires and do something cool with it and, that fe and from that feminine place. That will be challenged. That will be challenged. There's going to be some clearing that happens with our own feminine energies and with the collective divine feminine principle, you know, however, what again, whatever way you want to say that. Um, all kinds of ways, different ways to say the same thing, right? They're just words. They're just labels. Um, so, yeah, be aware of that. Can't read my own handwriting. I'm like, what is this last word? Being accepted. Thank you. <laughs> I, like, I couldn't read it. They had to like give it to me. And being accepted. Issues around um, self-acceptance, being accepted by others, and your ability to lead, um, and ability to, uh, to yeah, to, to take initiative and like be the one in the spotlight, be the one to say the thing that no one else is saying, be the first one to do it. All that Aries energy. Any insecurities, issues, woundings around that and how you've seen yourself, the old image of you, that is going to come up. And that will definitely be part of the full moon Scorpio. There was one more. And I'm like, I didn't write it down. Oh, that's right. Mars and Neptune. Okay, I didn't write it down. Um, so here's something else that's interesting. God, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to say. Um, Mars working with Neptune. Conjunct, thank you. They said conjunct. That's right. Duh, they're both in Pisces. Uh, conjunct Neptune. This is a beautiful energy and it could go either way, depending on you, depending on where you're at in your life and what's going on. If you have a negative state of mind, you're in a negative energy, you're in a negative, in, in a negative, I need to stop using that word, um, denser, you're in a denser place, um, you're in a heavier place, you're in a place that's a little closer to separation consciousness, um, that could, that could have um, some not so pleasant effects for you, that can create paranoia, that can create frustration, um, delusions, illusions, all the isions. Um, so just stay aware. Now, if you're in a much more optimistic, like state of mind, or you're trying to really like just be in a place of peace and, and presence and acceptance, this is a great aspect because it's going to help you to be more motivated. It's going to even enhance your optimism. It's going to enhance your creativity. And also there's going to be some sent, I'm getting like central romantic energies with that too. And it's just going to help as a booster, for staying committed to your path and staying focused on the new. Like I said, if you've had a hard time being focused on the new, you've been bogged down, you're around a lot of toxicity or toxic people, you're gonna really feel that being magnified. It's a magnifier. Mars conjunct Neptune and Pisces, it's a magnifier of what's already going on in and around you, okay? So again, something to be mindful of. You don't have to take that as like hardcore truth, but something to be mindful of. Now, before I get into cards, Let's talk about degrees and signs. So <clears throat> the staying focused. 
the staying focused on your goals, the staying focused on the new that you have in your life, whatever that may be, these improved, I'm getting the word improved, these improved relationships, these improved work situations, um, improved just balance you have in your life. But they're saying balance is a big one for the collective. I'm like, okay, balance. Um, I would look to your personal houses to see where you have. Hmm. Taurus, 20 to 25 degrees. Uh, Taurus, 20 to 25 degrees. Yeah. 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 That's where the new is being implemented. That's where the new is. That's where you want to stay your course. That's what you want to keep solidifying. So keep your focus there. Um, it'll keep you grounded. It'll keep you anchored. Now, Pisces, 20 to 25 degrees. Like I said, Pisces is a magnifier right now for this week and also under the full moon Scorpio. So harness Pisces energy in, in the best way you can. Or if you're really, really struggling, then just try to be gentle with yourself. Try not to be judgmental of yourself. We're all in a different place. We're all in a different way. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's totally okay. But Pisces 20, 20, 25 degrees is also a magnifying energy. So for example, for me, I'll use my, I always use my chart as an example. Uh, Taurus 20 to 20, 25 degrees is in my 11th house. So that's where a lot of new things are happening and a new thing, new things that I should be focused on that'll keep me grounded. And that totally rings true for where I'm at in my life. Pisces 20 to 25 degrees is my 10th house with the way that the houses fall for me. So that's like work, that's legacy, that's that's home, that's career, purpose even. And anything that's going on there is going to magnify everything that I'm feeling and everything that I'm experiencing. So if I stay focused on newfound friendships and tribes and communities um, new, like, and hopeful um, energy, um, innovation, creation, like that sort of stuff, if I stay focused there, um, my 10th house can really support me. And there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in my 10th house. So I'm, you know, so I'm using that as a booster. Um, challenges. The challenging energy is going to be Aquarius, like no question. <laughs> and I would say 20 to 25 degrees Aquarius. That's going to be the challenge. And for me, that's my eighth house. Scorpio, Scorpio energy, eighth house, but it's Aquarius. Um, Houses that are like innately shadowy and malefic are like eighth house, twelfth house. I also consider sixth house to be um, shadow, like you know, a little shadowy because it talks about like debts and losses, um, but it's not innately considered that. But I view it that way. So if you have anything going on in those houses with like Pisces or Aqua or Taurus, just be mindful. And Aries is where we're gonna see. Um, re I'm hearing reality check. Reality check of who you really are and are you really willing to own yourself and accept yourself? Are you still going to, you know, be hard on yourself, down on yourself, see yourself as not whole and complete because other people told you so or other experiences told you so? Are you willing to be a new version of yourself, yes or no, based off of the things you've experienced? But I think Aries is going to be a, a um, an avenue of healing, though for this week and the full moon Scorpio. So there might be stuff going on in the house of Aries, in your personal house of Aries for you that's based off your rising sign for those who don't know. Um, but Aries, hmm, it's really like that 15 degree point. I'm gonna say 10 to 15 degrees Aries for that. 10 to 15 degrees Aries. Now, if you have any personal planets with the, um, signs and degree ranges that I gave, you're going to energetically feel the intensity of this week more so than other people. But it's really about the houses of where all this stuff is transiting for you and where all this stuff is falling for you. Okay. All right. All righty. All righty. All righty. Also, I'm cooking right now. So I might have to get up and like go take something out of the oven in like 10 minutes. Um, but we'll see how long I'm going to be doing cards and channeling for anyway, because I feel like I've already said a lot. I'm like, what else is even going to come out? It's a, always a choice. This is something they want me to remind all of you of. It's always a choice. Everything is always a choice. You can keep following the new path. You can keep following something that is improved and new and, you know, have fun with being creative with the unknown parts of it, like the unsolidified parts of it to solidify something. Or you can get caught up in old paradigm, in fear, in other people's shit, in toxicity. Please avoid toxicity this week, especially towards the end and especially on Full Moon Scorpio. Like any toxic people, environments, even I'm hearing substances even. Because we you know, keep in mind Pisces and Scorpio, they both, you know, 
bring that stuff out. Um, it's going to be magnified. It's going to be magnified. Toxicity will be magnified. Avoid violent environments. Avoid violent people. Um, again, toxic people, toxic environments. Just be aware. Stay aware. But it's always a choice. Familiar is familiar, and it's like comfort zones are comfort zones, but everything that's familiar is not necessarily healthy or good. When we're trying to evolve, when we're trying to move forward, when we're trying to improve, it's about breaking away from what is known and what is familiar, and that is why it is hard. It's a leap of faith, but it's also a choice to trust that you have enough experience to to handle it, but I also heard the word enjoy. It's also about enjoying it. It should be exciting to jump into new territory. It can be exciting, so let it be exciting. Anything else? <laughs> They're like, always. There's a lot going on with the feminine. Now, when I say the feminine, I mean like the collective feminine energy. The feminine within all of us, the feminine that we all know of collectively as an energy, as its own little spirit entity. There's a lot going on there. You know, and even personally, I've been experiencing that. Last night I had a huge emotional purge and it was like, it was coming deep from within my, my sacral, like deep from within my womb space. And it was like, oh, this is collective. This is totally collective. And I actually had told, I actually had gotten the phone and told somebody about it. Um, well, I was talking about it and then it actually happened. Like I was, I was starting to feel those energies. I was starting to feel, anger and grief and it definitely was around like caring children having children um like almost like um the force like like being forced to use our own wombs and portals like because it's a portal it's a portal um in a way that we don't want in a way that is not like aligned with with the feminine it's an abuse of the portal it's abuse of the womb portal um, and then she was telling me all the abortion stuff that's happening, which I honestly, I try really hard to stay like away from all of that stuff. I will educate myself from time to time um, when I, when I feel guided to, but I don't immerse myself in it because it's not, it's toxic and it's unhealthy for me. I like, I absorb toxicity like nobody's business. <laughs> so I have to be careful. Um, but that was coming up and it's like, oh, okay, okay. And it's really that Chiron Venus Aries energy. So it's like, again, pay attention to where that's happening in your houses um, you might really feel that that collectively, that wounding of the self, the ego, the image, the abuse of creative feminine energy, the abuse of the womb portal um, within for yourself, your family, and of course, collectively. And men, you can feel this too. They want me to, they wanted me to say that. Men, you will feel this. <laughs> you can feel this. Um, yeah, film with Scorpio is going to be a ride. Um, Anything else? Are we ready for cards? We're ready for cards. We're ready for cards. So let's do it. Um, what are we starting with? We're going to start with Dreams of Gaia. Let's back this up here so I can shuffle. I also lowered my chair. Um, and I did that because I actually had it a little higher so that it was easier on my shoulders to shuffle. But it was, I realized it was like not good for my back because I couldn't touch the floor. Short people problems. Any messages or insights for the collective for this week? Hold on to your truth. Hold on to what will facilitate what it is you want. Keep yourself accountable. When emotions arise, honor them, honor them. You don't have to attach to them. They said honor them, you don't have to attach to them. Any messages or insights for the collective? like blue, blue, are these the Arcturians? Um, I've been, <laughs> there's been a lot going on with me. Uh, I recently had a, a, a very interesting and amazing, I'm trying not to use that, not to use that word, uh, beautiful encounter 
uh, with Arcturians. And they're, I feel like they're here. Uh, any messages or insights for the collective for this week? <laughs> they said we are. <laughs> okay, got it. They're helping. They're saying they're helping. Okay. Any messages or insights for the collective for this week? Ancestors, 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 ancestors. Um, be, be aware that not all ancestors are in a good way. <laughs> I'm going to say it that way, in a good way. Um, some are denser than others. I've been using the word dense to replace the word dark, to replace the word distorted, because I feel like that really rings true with what it is. Um, and I, f I like the energy of that word better, so dense. Um, some denser ancestors and, and live it. They're saying living relatives too. So there's gonna be some family stuff coming up for everybody. Um, it's part, of, and they said it's part of facing the self. The I, I'm hearing I am. It's part of facing the I am. Let it happen. Don't get attached to what happens. There might be some volatility around you. If there is, just take accountability for yourself and what's best for you and get out of that environment or decide to disengage or if people are arguing and shit, let them argue, let them do whatever. Um, you don't have to attach to it. Mm. So we have, I just heard the oven. Uh, we have masculine feminine with a seven of water in reverse. So let me just take care of the oven and I will be right back. Okay, hey guys. I gotta say that chicken looked really good. Okay. So we have masculine feminine. I'm gonna go this way. So we have masculine feminine with the seven of water in reverse. That seven of water, I'm really getting like resistance and lacking of flow, lacking of surrender, resistance, 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 resist, resistance to balancing out. I just feel like it's it's because it's harsh. Okay. Um, some of you are perceiving, I'm gonna use the word perceiving. Um, some of you are perceiving these changes, these events, these circumstances, these occurrences that you're being confronted with as very harsh, kind of abrasive, but that's because it's overwhelming. It's bringing up very deep stuff. It's bringing up very embedded stuff for the collective and for you, but it's coming up to so that we can all find balance. They're reminding me of Gemini, of Mercury Gemini. This Mercury retrograde period, I meant to do a video on it, but I might not have time before I have to leave. Um, this Mercury and Gemini retrograde period of time, which is basically the rest of May and a little bit of June. <clears throat> Whatever it brings up for you, yes, it'll be around communication and how you speak and how you think. And again, your own belief systems, how you relate to people. <laughs> but it's also about balance. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I really messed up that tea. Hold on. Um. But it's also about balance. So just try to flow with it as much as you can. Try to surrender as much as you can. Just because something is really painful or something is, um, it stirs a lot of emotion, doesn't mean it's bad. You can release it, you can experience it, and then realize, oh, I'm okay. Or realize, oh, I just had a release and I feel better. Yeah, so there's like a balancing that needs to happen here. And they keep saying, stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. Look at that. Getting used to this V still. Um, 
Yeah, they keep saying stay the course with this masculine feminine card. Stay the course and keep believing in yourself and keep believing what you've learned in the last couple months. What you've learned about yourself, what you have come to believe about yourself, what you've been shown about yourself, like the empowering things, who you really are. Don't lose sight of that just because something, just because you're having like a big emotional experience or there's chaos around you or suddenly it's like, oh my God, things are getting a little hard or, oh no, can I really follow through with this? And then the doubts, the doubts, the doubts, the wounded ego, wounded ego, wounded ego, ego, there you go, ego. Um, know your truth and stick to it and give yourself permission to experience emotions. Any other messages or insights for the collective for this week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowledge in reverse with the Ten of Wands in reverse. That knowledge in reverse card indicates that you're not utilizing all the tools you have, all the information you have. Like I, And I was literally just saying this. The truth that you have come into knowledge and awareness, literally knowledge of, and awareness of, it's still there. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Even if you have to, like sit down and journal about what has happened to you this year or even like who how you e have evolved from the person you've been you are different you are different you know yourself better you know more of what you're actually capable of and you know what you deserve you know that you know that so keep cementing the new keep cementing the new you have it's a it's got to be a daily practice i was just saying this in like a personal reading i did for somebody when we step into new, new way of being, new perceptions, new energies, new empowerment, new confidence, new projects, we have to keep at it. Like we have to keep holding on to it in the beginning because it's still like baby stages. It's still growing. It's not fully cemented yet. That's part of the integration process. So until that happens, you need to keep nurturing that. You need to bathe in that shit like every, every day, basically. The 10 of fire in reverse, it speaks of control. It speaks of a false sense of mastery because there's resistance, because there's doubts, because there's insecurities, because you're not relying on the, the truth that you already have. So stay focused. Stay focused this week. Even if you got to go down memory lane, stay focused. Any other messages or insights for the collective for this week? I'm not going to do that many cards. I feel like I've pretty much giving you guys everything that is necessary. Mm, beautiful. Oh, even better. The six of fire resolution. The six of fire comes out when there's been a mess made, <laughs> or there's been a mess, or there's been conflict, or in this in this particular deck, um, or you know, there's upheaval, there's chaos, or there's a struggle, even if it's an internal struggle. And this is finding resolution. This is coming to terms. This is finding a balance. A balance. Look at look at the two sides. It's finding a balance. And I'm also getting the whole balance between the light and the dark. All right. The balance of, of you and your own shadow. Overall, we have the king of water. Love. Love the heart space. The heart space, which is the key to having flow. It's the key to surrender. It's the key to all things. This is actually something that Arcturians were, were having me channel in private, but I, I felt like that was okay to share with people. So I guess I will share it with you. Um, they were they were trying to get me to drop my voice so I speak more from here and not from here, which is something I personally need. To speak from here, not from here. And they said, everything comes from the heart. Everything everything. Even if you're perceiving that, oh, there's something with my sacral, or oh, there's something with my third eye, or there's something with my throat or my root. And it's like, that may very well be the truth, but it's rooted through the heart. Everything comes back, comes back to the heart. Everything is a portal to the heart, like everything. Everything comes back to emotions and everything comes back to what you feel. All energy comes to the heart. It's a portal. So if, if let's say, for example, you're having um, issues with your sacral, let's say that's because of a relationship or that's because of some sexual stuff that's going on or your own creative process um, or lack thereof, that's because there's something emotional going on. That's because there's something going on in the heart space that's affecting that and creating that, manifesting that. So it was very fascinating. Anyway, so it, it always comes back to the heart. 
it always comes back to the heart. Underneath that, we do have journey in reverse. This is having difficulty with being present. This is having difficulty with um, accepting and being aware that when things happen that we don't like or there's a struggle of some kind that like it's just part of our journey. It's part of our experience. And it's, it is something that can give us a tool to use later or just give us a really beautiful memory. Um, whatever it is, every single moment is providing something for our journey. Everything is and everything can. And we should have gratitude for that. There's a, I'm almost getting to that there's, there's a struggle with that of having um, gratitude. So if you're struggling having gratitude for your life or what's going on in your life, that will help you to come back to this energy of love, the epitome of love, your heart space. Um, and that will help you to find grounding in it. That will help you to find flow again and help you to find balance. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I'm like, I don't feel like I need to pull that many cards. Like, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on this week, but like a lot of it just came through channeling. Um, yeah. 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 So I'm going to leave it there, guys. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Uh, don't forget to check out the website, Vimeo, Patreon, all that stuff. And thank you for joining me. I always really appreciate it. And have a really great week and a great full moon, Scorpio. Like I said, I will be live on Patreon, most likely on the 14th of May for that. So take care and have a good night, guys.